Hello, and welcome to lesson 3-5. In this lesson, we're going to talk about multiplying three-digit by two-digit numbers. So we worked on two-digit times one digit, we did two-digit times two-digit, and now we're doing three digits times two digits. Let's go ahead and take a look at our short lesson video, and then hop into our notes and our guided practice as always. How do you multiply three-digit numbers by two-digit numbers? Think about this question during the lesson. Last month, a bakery sold 389 trays of bagels. How many bagels did the store sell last month? What operation should you choose to join equal groups? You can use multiplication to join equal groups. Multiply 389 and 12 since you are joining equal groups. What do you think the strategy will be for multiplying 389 times 12? Use partial products. 2 times 9 equals 18. 2 times 80 equals 160. 2 times 300 equals 600. 10 times 9 equals 90. 10 times 80 equals 800. 10 times 300 equals 3000. Add the partial products. The store sold 4,668 bagels last month. You can also use the standard algorithm. Multiply the ones and regroup if necessary. 2 times 9 ones equals 18 ones, or 1 10 and 8 ones. 2 times 8 equals 16 tens. 16 tens plus 1 10 equals 17 tens. 17 tens equals 100 plus 7 tens. 2 times 3 hundreds equals 6 hundreds. 6 hundreds plus 100 equals 7 hundreds. What is the partial product? Select your answer. The partial product is 778. Multiply the tens and regroup if necessary. 10 times 9 ones equals 90 ones. 10 times 8 tens equals 80 tens. 10 times 3 hundreds equals 30 hundreds or 3,000. What are the partial products? The partial products are 778 and 3,890. Add the partial products. The store sold 4,668 bagels last month. Now you know how to multiply three-digit numbers by two-digit numbers. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our notes and our guided practice for this lesson. So how do you multiply three-digit numbers by two-digit numbers? You can use your standard algorithm or you can use partial products to multiply greater numbers in the same way that you use them for smaller numbers. So when you're multiplying two digit by two digit, this is going to follow those same steps. Let's take a look at our first example. It says a local charity collected 163 cans of food each day for 14 days. How many cans did they collect in all? So what I know from the, the question is that there's 163 cans for each day and they collected for 14 days. Now I can use a standard algorithm and I can use partial products. So you can see here, the same way we split it up before by place value, here we're splitting it up again by place value, except now that we're working the hundreds, we'll have three different numbers across the top here instead of two. So our 14 got split into 10 plus four, our 163 got split into 100 and 60 and three. 
So you can see as your numbers get bigger, using uh, an area model or this box method gets a little bit less practical because it starts to take up a lot of space, but you can still use it if you need to. So 10 times 100 gave us 1,000. That was our first partial product. 10 times 60 gave us 600. And 10 times 3 gave us 30. We also had 10, uh, 4 times 100 gave us 400. 4 times 60 gave us 240. And then 4 times 3 gave us 12. When we added up all those partial products, we got a sum of 2,282 cans collected. Now here, I can, use, I can complete this using a standard algorithm. So stacking and multiplying and regrouping as needed. Now here, I'm going to do four times three gave me 12. So I put my two and I regrouped that one from the 12 into the tens place. Four times six gave me 24 plus that one gave me 25. So I put my five over here and I regrouped the two and then Four times one gave me four plus two more was six. So I recorded my six. Now I needed to add a zero placeholder because now I'm working in the tens place. So 10 times three was 30. So that's the zero placeholder is there. So I put a three right here and I have my zero placeholder. So one times three gave me the three, one times six gave me six and one times one gave me one. So then I added my partial products of 652 plus 1,630. And again, I got to my same total of 2,282. So let's go back and go through this slowly. Four ones times three ones gave us 12 ones, which is the same thing as two ones and a group of 10. Four ones times six tens gave us 24 tens plus one more, which gave us 25 tens. So I put my five in the tens place and my two in the hundreds because that's two hundreds and five tens. And then my four ones times my 100 gave me 400 plus two more hundreds gave me 600. So that's in the hundreds place here. Now, my group of 10 times three ones gave me 30. 10 times six gave me 600. So that goes here. And 10 times 100 gave me 1,000. And that goes here. Now, when using a standard algorithm, remember you have to do the following. Always put your bigger number on top. So your number that has more digits, stack that on top. Always stack your numbers in place value order. Regroup whenever you need to, so carry things over. And then remember to add your partial products at the end. So in the example above, 163 times 14. First, we multiplied the four in the ones place by all the numbers in 163, starting from the smallest place value, which was the three, to the largest place value, which was the 100. And we regrouped. When we began to multiply the one from the 14, which is one group of 10, since it's in the tens place, we had to begin writing our partial product from the tens place. So we put a zero placeholder in the ones place, that way our answer could also begin in the tens place. All right, let's take a look at some more examples. Here we had 892 times 18. So again, we start from the one. So eight times two is 16. Put my six, carry my one. Eight times nine is 72. Plus one more is 73. Put my three here, carry my seven. And then eight times eight was 64. 64 plus seven gave me 71. So I recorded the whole 71 since there was nowhere else to carry digits. Next, we got to the one in the tens place. So I put my zero placeholder and began in my tens place. So one times two was two, one times nine was nine, and then one times eight was eight. I added my two partial products here and I found a total of 16,056. Now here I had 90 times 50. So the zero times everything above it gave me zeros. And then to start with the five that's in the tens place, I put my zero placeholder and five times zero was zero and five times nine was 45. Then I added my partial products and I found a total of 4,500. Next, I multiplied 659 times 17. So seven times three, 
or sorry, seven times nine gave me 63. So I put my three here and I carried my six. Seven times five was 35. 35 plus six more gave me 41. So I put my one and I carried my four. And then seven times six was 42. 42 plus four more gave me 46. So I, I recorded that whole total because there was nowhere else to carry numbers. Then I moved on to my tens place. So I put my zero placeholder. One times nine was nine. One times five was five. And one times six was six. I added my partial products and I got a total of 11,203. All right, one more example, and then we're going to jump into our guided practice. It says, is 3,198 a reasonable product for 727 times 44? Why or why not? So first I wanted to stack. So I did my standard algorithm, 727 times 44. So four times seven was 28. I put my eight and carried my two. Four times two was eight. Plus that two more gave me 10. So I put a zero here and carried a one. And then four times seven gave me 28 again, plus that one gave me 29. Now to work in my tens place, I put my zero placeholder. Four times seven again was 28. So I put my eight, I carried my other two. Four times two is eight, plus that two gave me 10. So I put my zero, I carried my other one. And four times seven was 28 plus that one gave me 29. So here my total was 31,988. So 3,198 is not a reasonable product because when I multiplied, I found that the product was 31,988, which is much greater than that estimate. Now, another thing I could have done to check for reasonableness is I could have rounded these numbers and found an estimate that way. So I could have done uh, 700 times 50 or 700 times 40 and found that estimate to see if it was close to the answer they gave me. For our guided practice, number one says a theater can seat 540 people at one time. How many tickets are sold if the theater sells out every seat for one 30 day month. So I need to figure out those 540 people that can fit inside means there's 540 seats. And if they're going to sell out every single day for 30 days, I need to do 540 times 30. Now zero times anything gives us zero. So when we multiply it across, and then to get to our tens place, I put my zero placeholder in the ones. Three times zero again is zero. Three times four is 12. I put my two and I carried my one. And three times five is 15, plus that one that I carried was 16. I added my numbers and I got a total of 16,200. So they will need to sell 16,200 tickets to fill every single one of those seats for 30 days. For number two, it says it's 540, or sorry, is 500 times 30 a good estimate for the number of tickets sold to the theater in one month? Explain. So yes, that would be a good estimate because 500 times 30 is close to 540 times 30. Uh, 500 times 30 would give me 15,000. And that's close to my original answer of 16,200. For numbers three through six, it asked us to find the product and then to estimate to check and see if our answer is reasonable. So I had 236 times 46. Six times six is 36. I put my six and I carried my three. Six times three is 18, plus that three gave me 21. So I put my one and I carried my two. And then six times two is 12, plus two more gave me 14. Now I recorded the whole 14 because there's nowhere else to carry those numbers. Now I'm going to work with the digit in the tens place. So I put a zero placeholder so I can start in the tens place. Four times six is 24. So I put my four, I recorded my two, I carried my two. Four times three is 12, plus two more is 14. So I put my four and I carried my one. And then four times two is eight, plus one more is nine. I added my two partial products and I got a total of 10,856. Now to estimate, I did 200 times 50 and I got a total of 10,000. So my answer is reasonable. 
for number four, I had 61 times 25. Five times one is five. I recorded that. Five times six is 30. I recorded that as well, since there's nowhere for me to carry and regroup. And I put my zero placeholder. Two times one is two. I recorded that. And then two times six is 12. I recorded that as well. I added those two partial products and found a total of 1,525. When I estimated, I did 60 times 30, and that gave me an estimate of 1,800. So my answer is reasonable. They are close to each other. For number five, I had 951 times 62. Two times one is two. I recorded that. Two times five is 10. So I put my zero and carried my one. And then two times nine is 18, plus that one that I carried over gave me 19. I put my zero placeholder and then began in the tens place. Six times one is six. Six times five is 30. I put my zero and carried my three. And six times nine was 54. 54 plus three more gave me 57. I added my two partial products and I got a total of 58,962. When I estimated, I rounded my numbers to 1,000 times 60, and that gave me 60,000. And 60,000 is close to 58,962, so my answer is reasonable. Now, the last one that we have for this lesson is 185 times 5. So 5 times 5 gives me 25. I record my 5 and I carry my 2. 5 times 8 is 40. 40 plus 2 more is 42. So I record my 2 and I carry my 4. And five times one is five plus four more is nine, giving me a total of 925. To check and see if my answer is reasonable, I rounded 185 up to 200. I multiplied that by five, which gave me 1,000. 925 is close to 1,000. So again, my answer was reasonable. That takes us to the end of our notes and our guided practice. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, have an amazing day. Take care. Bye-bye.